Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts. Hey, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Roy Kennedy. And today we're talking about Marvel United. Now, this is actually the second time we did it. In fact, the first time we did it, our, this series wasn't even called Four Squares. Mm-hmm. We just did a review with the four of us. But we talked about Marvel United because we managed to get an early version of it from Walmart. They were selling it at Walmart. (laughs) But all of us backed it in different ways on the Kickstarter. And so those pledges showed up a few weeks ago. And we've been playing it more than once, more than twice. Well, quite a bit more, actually, for some of us. And we're coming in with that. So I guess with that being said, let's quick go through what we got and about how many times we played since then, so you can kind of get a grasp of that. I've got everything, and I played with everything. I've tried every hero, every villain at least once, some of them multiple times. Z? I got everything except the cardboard tiles. Um, which are a waste of time. Yeah, I got everything, including the play mat, which is nice. And I've played, I don't know, um, over a dozen times... Each of those times is probably is two games, though, usually, so because we rarely play once. Um, I don't know. I, I'll say between 15 and 20 times. I don't know. I got uh, everything except for the cardboard locations, and I did not get the play mat either, uh, but I got all of the you know core expansion stuff. Um, and I've played it double-digit times. I've played all of the different uh, challenges, so from all of those boxes, everything except for the traitor one that comes in the tales of asgard so i've played you know all of the other kind of alternate play modes of the game for me i just got just the basic pledge um i was trying to be more economical like price per miniature sort of thing um but Mm. i figured that was still a ton of content for the game just with all the exclusives you get and i even though i didn't back it i have the cardboard stuff that tom gave me (laughs) um, that i can add into the game but i've only played it a few times and mostly with my kids is what i played it with so Cool. Yeah, as a quick side note before we get started, we're talking there were some cardboard locations. Mm-hmm. I found them to be too bulky to put into the game. I gave them to Roy. The the, the flat ones were fine by me. And the playmat, I have actually I have not even used the playmat yet because it's too big for my table at home. Mm-hmm. And oh, okay. it will work here it's, on this table. It's very nice. But Z, I've gotten kind of used to playing with just a small play area in front of me. Instead of having this big, long row of cards, sure. I just leave out the last couple cards, unless it's a card that says if it's visible in the mat, or if there's an enemy who turns them over or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a, and there's a decent amount of cards that pull one back from the storyline into your hand, right. or you switch one back. So I think, I mean, again, that's that's one way to do it. You can play it like that, obviously. I think the play mat, though, is, a, is very good. It's very well done. So for me, the game is definitely enhanced with more stuff. The original box, if you get it, I believe has eight heroes and three villains. Mm. And is that right? You, it might be. Is well, it might that be many six, heroes. Seven, it's not eight. It's yeah, six or seven he- heroes. Either way, there's a small amount yeah. of heroes and uh, three. There's definitely three villains. There's Ultron, yes. Red Skull, and uh, the Taskmaster. Right. So. If you then get the extra stuff, there's up to 27 villains, I think, and 59 heroes. There is a ton, but each hero, each villain you add, adds that much more variety. Right. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I really like about the game is it's the easiest of all these games. It's the easiest plug and play there is. I don't have to do anything except grab a hero deck for each person and grab the villain stuff. You don't need to plug in. You don't need to build a deck. You don't need to add in some neutral cars or whatever, you know, like a lot of these other games do. You grab it stuff. It's a really, really fast setup time. And for that, I was really appreciative as I played through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, I, I, I think I agree with you there that it's obviously having more content is going to give you more plays, give you more variety per each of those plays. Uh, a couple of issues that I originally had with the game bec- have gone away because of either settled into some doing something else or has become less of a problem with more variety. So, for example, not a big fan of shield mode. 
of playing solitaire. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I like seeing more content, so also not a huge fan of the two-player. I like three, I like four. But it is incredibly easy to play two-handed. I mean, the game is so basic. I can play with two mm -hmm. players, both of us running a character, uh, you know, two characters, and it gives me, it simulates a four-player game fantastically. Like, you know, completely smooth. Um, I also had a concern about, like, oh, I'm worried that I'm going to wear these cards out. i got to sleeve it, all that stuff. Right. But if you have more stuff, you're using less of, you know, you're basically, like, if you play ten times, you're spreading that over a lot more cards, right. a lot more content. Yep. So that's going to drop, you know. Um I think, it, yeah, absolutely. It enhances the entire package. Mike, how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I agree 100%. And I wanted to kind of uh, maybe expand a little bit on what Tom was saying about the plug-and-play nature of it. That's mm -hmm. the thing that I think was most impressive to me is that the core game, and, and some people have even said maybe to its detriment, is such a simple system. Uh, I mean, there's really not much to it. But what that does allow to do is that you've got these different modes that change up the feel of the game enough that you feel like it's different than the core box, but you're not having to fiddle around with a lot of different components. Most of these might add, if anything, one or two little tokens. The basic game is still played the same, but I feel like they've really pulled off a nice little trick where little tweaks to the system, where you don't feel like you have to learn anything else, but gives you a slightly different experience. I like that so much. Your heroes are basically going to play the same no matter what. But the little switch-ups with the villains, the little switch-ups with maybe how some of the locations are handled, um, it's still the same game, but with a, a nice little change there. Um, I mean, Roy, have you played uh, enough of the kind of, have you played any of the alternate modes yet, or have you just kind of played with the different heroes? I've mostly played with just the basic stuff with a few of the different villains yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I just really enjoy the simple, I'm, I'm a big fan of Marvel and stuff like that, so having more of the stuff for the game has been great. And I, like I said, I mostly play this with my kids. That was one of the main reasons I got it. And I, and I enjoyed the fact that it is really easy to get into. It's really easy for them to recognize all the different symbols and this stuff. When you switch up heroes, they have slightly different powers and you can try to figure out how to combo those together and which heroes might work together good as a group. Um, so that's really cool as well. But the main difference in this is when you change out the villain, that's what makes the game feel different. You know, it's like, oh man, sure. this villain is running around the board and smashing you because he's Rhino and it makes sense because he's charging around. Or maybe there's just different aspects with all sorts of different sorts of villains that's really going to make the game feel different. Um, and that's where the replayability came in. And even with just having just the, the Kickstarter exclusive box or the add-on box or whatever it's called, um, that was a ton of extra content that was added to the game with those villains and with those heroes. It was just a massive amount. Mm. And I had a lot of mm. fun going through with my kids and they were all excited, like, oh, this is this person, this is this person. And they were they had just watched WandaVision, so I really wanted to play mm. WandaVision the first time we played <laughs> out of the box. So it was a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah, I I disagree with Mike a little bit on the modes. I think the Sinister Six is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. these modes feel like stuff that were just thrown in the boxes. I don't care about them at all. But where I want to walk back from my original review of this, Roy said the villain changes things up. I highly agree with that. Mm -hmm. The villain's how the game is played. But my appreciation for the heroes has gone up. I originally said, eh, they're all kind of the same. They got three special cards. But they, they feel <laughs> – I've played so many times now – they very much feel different to me. Mm, yeah. The icons at the bottom, there's only 12 cards, so having three special cards is one-fourth of your deck. You mm -hmm. know, knowing which how the characters work together, and if you do, I don't often pick the heroes based on the villain, but if you do, you know, trying to build a team that kind of complements each other icons, it's still not that diverse, right? But I think... I have an appreciation for the difference between the heroes to the point where I, I rank them all. But I also feel like other than there's a couple that feel slightly overpowered compared to the rest of the heroes, but they mostly all feel very balanced. On the other hand, if you complained about how easy the original game was, <laughs> they've made yeah. some villains that are going <laughs> to kick your teeth out. Oh, for sure. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I find myself losing often to some of these. And I play on an easier mode than Z. What about you, Z? Do you do you get beat up as much as me? And no, you know, we've been doing... Um, I've been adjusting. I've been messing with the difficulty, actually, to find a happy medium. Got smacked around by Ronan a couple times. So made it a little easier. 
by keeping the wilds in that became too easy so you know i like that you can modify that there's a there's a great way to do it and i love games that have a there's gradients of difficulty not just mm-hmm. the the bad guys certainly have different difficulties but you know the way you play as well i agree with you tom i think i i have a newfound appreciation of the characters and i was talking to chris and he said something about I was bringing up which characters I played. And he said, "Oh, I guess you know, no one's favorite is going to be one from the core box." And I, I said, "No, you know, I seeing all the extra characters has given me newfound appreciation for the ones that are in the box. Now mm-hmm. I see how different they are because mm-hmm. I can see the entire spectrum." Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And I like that about it. I, I agree that it felt, um, it was. It was interesting the amount of room they found to make these characters subtle but but different. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that about it, you know. Yeah, I agree. And it also that was a way that they can lend a little bit of thematic touch, you know, because some of them are obvious, like Quicksilver, obviously, you know, he's going to have more of the movement. Mm-hmm. But they didn't right. just do that. They also made some of his special power cards thematically thematically tie in as well thor and things like that even you know the ones that i'm aware of as somebody who's not as deeply steeped into the marvel universe as certainly tom and roy are i don't really know your history with it z but it was enough that i still felt like somebody who's you know a novice with not with the knowledge of it that oh this feels really cool it feels thematic um and i i also feel like when we're talking about difficulty some of these new modes that I know, Tom, you're pushing back on that a little bit. We can agree to disagree on that. But some of those modes, I think, are also an easy way to adjust the difficulty because the Sinister Six mode, to me, is just a more difficult way to play the game. I mean, oh, it feels like so no matter fun, which, though. it's great. Oh, it's fantastic. But no matter which heroes you or, or villains you pick, even if you don't pick the Sinister Six, that mode, I feel like, is different. It, it, it's harder, I think. Um, you know, the plan B, you can, you can have a, an alternate win condition now. So oh, I, like I do B. like those. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's what I was getting at with that. I think another thing I want to bring up that's completely different is the fact that, uh, I know this gets kind of forgotten in these days where every game comes with tons of miniatures, but this is a Simon game. And one of the things that I was really impressed from this game is even though they're chibi sculpts and all that stuff, I love the way the sculpts look in this game. Yes. Especially seeing yes. all of the different pe- like all the different Marvel characters out there. They have all sorts of different esoteric characters from all over the place. And all the sculpts look amazing. And I love how they have all these like really nice molded bases. I know a lot of people that are really into painting are just gonna like be super stoked to jump on this project. And it's gonna be a lot. But, uh, man, maybe someday I'll have enough time to be able to pull that off. But that, that was one of the most exciting things that for me was just pulling them out and be like, oh, look at the cool miniatures, you know. That's yeah. one of the things that are really exciting about these games as well. Yeah, overall, my opinion on the game has changed from playing everything. I liked the original game. I gave it an, an 8. I thought it was a very good game. But it felt like it needed more. Now, I want to be cautious here, folks. There's six expansions and there's also a whole box of Kickstarter exclusive stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of the, there's one or so expansion going to retail. You can, uh, from when I was doing this, there's a, another Kickstarter coming up with more stuff, and you can get some of that original stuff. I don't think you need to have everything to have fun. I really yeah. don't. But adding just one or two expansions with a few more villains, or getting one of the ones that has a lot of villains, and some more heroes, it really increases is your enjoyment a lot. I've act- so I'm going from an eight to a nine. That's mm. how much I like this. It also, for me, and this is something I've been harping on lately, I've been saying that I think cooperative games are getting so difficult. They're also very convoluted. Yep. This one is not, well, Thanos is really difficult, I, th- I feel. Mm. But it's other than that, it's not that difficult, but it feels challenging to me. And like Z says, you can adjust the difficulty, but it's easy to play. I don't have to. I can teach it really quickly. It's a yes. fun teamwork style game. It's right down my alley. And at this point in time, I'd rather pull this out than some of my other Marvel games that I like recently. Like I would rather play this than Dice Masters, than um, and the the deck building one, which is just legendary Marvel Legendary, you know, and mm-hmm. and Champions. Uh, but I like it a lot. You never played Champions. <laughs> Roy I didn't play. Roy, Roy can't get me in here. No, but. This is my Marvel game of choice right now. That mm-hmm. might change, but I'm really liking it. I also have played it a lot solo. I don't normally do that with games, and this one I just had a lot of fun with. So this has moved to a nine for me. What about you, Z? 
I was having a conversation the other day while I was playing the game here that I uh, I brought up the fact that I felt good about backing everything because I was using everything because mm, I felt like yes. I was going through it. Yep. As opposed to some games I've backed, you know, the the game shows up, it's it's thirty two boxes, and I know in my heart of hearts, <laughs> I'm not gonna play all this stuff. I know that. I like owning it, right? But part of me knows that, you know, I'm not really going to, like, when am I ever going to play this four versus four overlord mode with the, you know, that's not going to happen. This game, I will play through everything multiple times. I will get my money's worth. So I'm looking at this from that point of view. Mm, Someone yeah. who already backed it, and, or, you know, not even what you think. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this for me. What I think, mm -hmm. having everything. I think my original rating was a seven or a 7.5. And I'm also going up to a nine. Wow. Because I really wow. think having all of the characters in there, all of the baddies, all of the flavor suddenly injected into the game is going to keep the entire package, core box and otherwise, really fresh for a long time and accessible because it's so easy to play. You're right. You can just yep. pop this thing out and play a couple times and you feel good about that. You know, it's mm. 40. You play two games in an hour and that's great. Yep. So, yeah, I'm giving it a 9 as well. Okay, Mike, give us a 10. <laughs> well, look, I'm I'm I don't want to repeat what you two have said, but you've echoed a lot of my own thoughts on this. I believe I was coming in at a 7.5 to begin with with the core box, but I think I'm I'm almost sure I said at the time that I hope that it'll go up with the expansions and it has. I'm also at a 9. Um I will say this, Tom, I do agree that you don't need all of this to have a good time. Although you are rating all of them, and you're going to have separate videos up for all these. My quick suggestion for me uh, is I think if you're going to get one expansion, you get with the Sinister Six. If you were going to get two, you get the Sinister Six, and you get the Infinity Gauntlet. That's my recommendation. I think those two alone and take Infinity it Gauntlet's to a nine. Kickstarter exclusive, though. Oh, yeah, they might mention, be able to get it in a future Kickstarter or something. Yeah. Yeah, right. I should mention now before we keep going, I meant to correct you, Tom, and I forgot. None of them are coming to retail now. Okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, Spin Master Games is not releasing anything besides the okay. core box in retail. Mm. If you want it, you have to get it from the Kickstarter that's coming up. The, the, oh, okay. The next. Okay. So be aware of that. That's a that's a good point. I, I was not aware of that, but yeah, if you were gonna you know looking into it during the uh, X Men United uh, coming up, those would be the two I would go with first um, for my personal opinion. But it's a nine. It's excellent. It's an excellent game. For me, I'm going to say it's going to be just slightly a little bit lower for me, and it's an 8.5. I really enjoy the game. Oh. I think it's great. I, I think overall, I don't know if this is a game that I would personally choose to like play with my game group normally um, if I was playing it. I, I really enjoy playing this with my kids. The, it's super simple the way everything comes together. It's really easy to throw on the table. Um, I like a little bit more depth of decisions in my game a lot of times. Normally when you play this, what to do is going to be pretty relatively obvious when you're doing it. It's just the teamwork and stuff that working together is going to be a lot of fun in that. And of course, I love Marvel. 8.5 is also still excellent, so I really love the game, and I'm extremely excited about more coming out for it. Not my favorite Marvel game, but I definitely really enjoy it a lot. You found a way to sneak in there that we're a little bit dumber than you. I, I like it. <laughs> no, I, get, I know what Roy no, said. I he mean, likes to... I don't want to like talk about other games during this review. Everybody knows, yeah. so it's fine. You know. Um, folks, uh, in the link to this video, we'll have a, a link to our original review where it shows how the game is played, mm -hmm. so you can learn more about that. And we've reviewed everything else about the game this week, mm -hmm. so you'll be able to look at all that, too. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully that helps you out. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Roy Kennedy. Excelsior. Excelsior.